welcome back to my channel. Today is going to be a quick review video on the Strobe Cosmetics Creepy Cute Palette. I have had this palette, of course, since it launched and I did go to Sri Lanka. If you guys don't know already, I took a little trip in the month of April and May, so I was not able to test all the new eyeshadow palettes I had been, you know, hoarding. And so I came back and I tried out the palette and I'm ready to share my thoughts with you. So if you're interested in hearing a tan girl's opinion on the Creepy Cute palette, just keep watching. Now you guys know if you follow my channel again, I am on a huge indie brand kick. So I've been trying every indie brand I can get my hands on. Strobe Cosmetics is one of those brands where they do have a huge disclaimer on their website saying their shipping is basically very slow. Um, not in a negative way, but they're a small indie brand. I believe they are a female-owned indie brand as well. So they're kind of like a one-man, two-man show, so they don't have a lot of time to constantly be making eyeshadows. And so they have a huge disclaimer on their site saying, like, don't expect your shadows and blah, 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 blah. So I believe I pre-ordered this Creepy Cute palette, and it did take some time to get back get to me, but... It's been so long since this palette is out, I really don't want to get into like the details of that so much. But I did do some research on the background of the company and I did find out that this brand was founded by Chloe and basically started when she was 15 years old. She, you know, really enjoyed YouTube and kind of got sucked in and decided to start her own cruelty-free and I believe vegan makeup line. So this is their first eyeshadow palette. They do have some singles as well as pigments and stuff like that. I haven't tried any of those. I decided a good way to try the brand would be to go ahead and purchase the palette. So this is what the palette looks like in case you haven't seen it. There are eight matte pastel shades except there is a black and the shade called tombstone i really don't think you can call that a pastel color it's an interesting khaki color which i think is cool so i just want to give you guys my quick opinion on this palette i was really excited for a pastel palette and from an indie brand which is great this palette does retail for 35 dollars and let me show you the box it comes in this is what it looks like on the back here is the shades and I think creepy cute is a wonderful concept it has a you know kind of something different and I feel like it's very cartoony it's very like cute creepy get it anyway this does say that it has a 12 month shelf life and yeah it's a very cool concept also you get a net weight of 0.0423 ounces um, that is a 0.0529 ounces of product in each pan if any of you care about that so very excited for a pastel palette the pastel goth palette I was not a fan of if you guys I think I reviewed it on my channel a very long time ago when it first came out if I can find it I will link it up in the cards for you guys to check out was not a fan of it it didn't show up on my face and so I decided to take a chance with this guy and buy it I did film a swatch party video for this palette when I first received it and I will link it up in the cards as well. I was very excited during the swatch party. The shades were swatching on me so beautifully. The pigmentation was blowing me away. I was so excited to put this palette on my eyes. So once I started putting this on my eyes, I realized the best way to use this is kind of how people started telling you to use the subculture palette. So you really don't want to blend. If you want that full pigmentation, you want to kind of stamp the shadow. And for me, that makes it really hard to get precise. I know some people are, I don't know how they do it, like how much sticky tape they use to get those beautiful like creases and like different shapes and things like that. I'm not that creative when it comes to eyeshadow, but I did an eye look with this and to get that full pigmentation, like for it to show up like this, you can't blend it because once you start blending it, it basically, you know, the color just kind of, it isn't as vibrant. So that's something to keep in mind, especially when you're using it on your eyes. I'm actually wearing this pink shade in my crease today as well as the purple. And if you could get a good look at my eyes, you would see that it pretty much blended away into my skin. So that is my main gripe with this palette. I don't think it's tan girl friendly. Now that is just my opinion. I know a lot of people love this palette. And maybe, you know, you have more skills than me and you can get this palette to work. But if you are basic like me and uh, you don't know a whole ton about, you know, eyeshadow, you might have a hard time with this palette. And it's 35 bucks, so it's not, like, going to break the bank. 
but you know if you are gonna know that this isn't gonna work for you out of the gate you might as well save your money and not purchase this I hate telling people not to support an indie brand but it's not that I have anything against the brand I just don't think this palette is for people with tan skin I watched uh, I think Georgia Harris on YouTube and she said you definitely want to blend these shadows and I think that if you have lighter skin even if you blend these this will still show up vibrantly I mean it's basically like having a white base you know a white base is gonna help the shadow pop more and I'm not really big on using a white base. I did try to use like concealer with this particular palette just to make it pop a little more. But honestly, I was really, really disappointed with the results. The only way I could get these shades to stand out is to kind of press them in and not blend them. So if you are into blending your eyeshadow, you might not enjoy this palette. Otherwise, I do think this is a great palette. Like I said, I just don't think this is a tan girl friendly product. And I feel like that's mostly what you hear when it comes to pastel palettes. Like, pastel goth, that's how I felt. I feel the same way about this one. I did buy the Lorac Ladies That Like to Brunch palette. Um, but that palette was... I was I picked that up because I was so excited about the fact that it was a pastel palette. But I didn't even end up using it or touching it or swatching it. I just took it right back because I was like, Karen, you don't like Lorac's formula. Like, what the fuck are you doing buying their palette? So... I don't think I even swatched that. Or maybe I did. I don't know. I can't remember. Um, so yeah, this one is just not for me. And uh, I think you guys might find this on my Poshmark sooner rather than later. Because I just, I've tried so hard to make it work. And I just don't like what it looks like once it starts blending. Like, do you see that? So like, I just swatch the pink. It's vibrant. But like, once I start blending, it's just so ashy on my skin. So yeah, I'm, I'm really disappointed, you guys. So. Okay, guys, I'm going to insert this clip in my creepy, cute review video. I just wanted to let you guys know something I thought was important to mention is that I usually spray Fix Plus on at the end of my makeup routine. And I wore the Creepy Cute palette last Sunday to go to brunch with friends. And as soon as I sprayed this on my face and it hit my eyeshadow, it totally muddied up my eyeshadow. The little bit of pigmentation... I had managed to get from the palette was gone. Some parts of my eyeshadow just melted away so there was patches of my skin showing and yeah there were a lot of creases and stuff like that and I've never had to worry about spraying this and covering my eyes like when I spray Fix Plus I just spray my entire face and I don't think twice about it um, but with this palette it did cause a mess so that's another thing I want to mention if you guys are trying to buy this palette just be careful don't spray it when any like fix plus or any kind of setting spray and if you have used a palette and you have sprayed fix plus on your eyes when you're like ending your makeup look let me know if you noticed that or you didn't or if I was just completely crazy because I'm curious I just think that's another reason to be cautioned about this palette I don't think it's a palette for beginners by any means and I really don't think it's suitable for me and my skin tone so let me know your thoughts if you are tan or you're a deep dark skin tone have you picked up this palette if so how do you get it to work if you guys have seen tutorials or anything if you want to show me down below I'd be more than happy to check them out but those are my honest thoughts on this palette and I hope you guys appreciate it and Thank you so much for watching my channel. I know I've been kind of MIA lately. I'm trying to get my shit together. So don't forget to keep your eyes peeled on my next video. I will see you guys soon. Bye!